Well, hello and welcome to The Zone. I'm your host, Big Wave Dave. So today we're going to talk about the six days of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and everything in them. And the Bible tells us that he did all of that in just six days. Let's take a closer look. On day one, God created earth, space, time, and light. Which, you know, kind of brings up a question. How could there have been a day without the sun? Because that wasn't created until later. There is an answer. Let's take a look. So what is the definition of a day? One day is one rotation of the earth. So you see, we don't need the sun or the stars or anything else. We only need the earth to have a day. Let's talk about day two. On day two, God created the atmosphere. Now the atmosphere is so important. It gives us air to breathe and helps keep us warm. And it also protects us from the sun's harmful rays and from meteorites when they hit the earth. And did you know that even though we can't see it, that air has weight? It's actually pushing down and all around us. It creates something that scientists call atmospheric pressure. Need some proof? Let's do a simple experiment. Okay, so I'm going to take this cup. I'm going to fill it up about halfway or so. And then I'm going to take this paper plate and I'm going to cover the cup and hold on tight. And we're going to turn it over and see what happens. Are you ready? Here we go. That is so cool. Why is this happening? We'll talk about that in just a minute. And in case you're wondering, is there really water in this cup? Yes, there is. So why did this happen? Let's take a closer look. All right, let's talk about this experiment. So we had the weight of the water pushing down on the paper plate. But what we couldn't see is that the atmospheric pressure was pushing up on the bottom of the plate. And since the pressure of the air was greater than the pressure exerted by the water, it held the plate in place. Pretty cool, huh? You should try that at home. Day three, God created the dry land and the plants. So the next time you go on a hike, stop and take a look around. Look at all the different plants that God created, grass and bushes and trees and flowers. Speaking of flowers, I have a question. Why did God make flowers so beautiful? Well, I think it's because he wanted us to enjoy his creation. But you know, plants do more than just look good. They're really important. For example, they provide oxygen that we need to breathe. And of course, they also provide food. Now, what's really cool is when you cut into fruits and vegetables, you'll often see little seeds. And we can take those seeds and plant them to produce more fruits and vegetables. It's God's way of making sure that we have enough food. He thought of everything. Okay, so day four, God created the sun, the moon, and the stars. So I have a question. Some people say that the six days of creation weren't actual days, that they may have been thousands or maybe millions of years. Well, there's a problem with that. Let's take a look. Bible teaches that God created plants on day three, but he didn't create the sun until day four. Now, if it's just one day, a 24-hour period, that's no problem. But if it's thousands or millions of years, how would the plants survive? The simple answer, they wouldn't. Speaking of the sun, God did a really good job at designing the sun. Here are some interesting facts. First, the earth is just the right distance from the sun. If we were any closer, it would be too hot on earth. If it was any further, it would be too cold. Also, the sun is the right size and type. It gives us just the amount of energy we need to sustain life on Earth. And finally, the sun is remarkably stable, much more stable than a lot of the stars that we see out there. So, have you ever wondered, why do we need the moon? Well, obviously it puts out great light, but it does something even more important. The moon is what causes the ocean tides. You see, the gravitational pull of the moon on the earth causes the earth to bulge, and that causes the tides to rise and fall. 
And that's really important because it keeps the water mixed up, which helps the animals that live in the ocean stay healthy and happy. You know, I love the way that the Bible says God made the stars. Like, ah, no big deal. How many didn't he make? Well, scientists have been trying to figure that out for years. Here's the latest guess. Wow, that is a lot of stars. What, what's even more amazing is the Bible tells us that God knows each of those stars by name. We have an amazing God. Okay, so God's got everything all set for what he's going to do next. On day five, God created the sea and the flying creatures. So my dad used to be a scuba diver and he's gone all over the world and brought back pictures of hundreds of different types of fish. It's amazing how many there are. And of course, sea creatures don't just include fish, they include creatures like whales. Now, if you've ever studied whales, you'll discover that they are absolutely amazing. Obviously, somebody really smart made them. You know, sea creatures also include things like sea turtles and eels and octopus and hundreds and hundreds of other types of animals. Now, on day five, God also made the flying creatures. So when I hear that, the first thing I think of is birds. You know, birds are so cool. They come in so many different shapes and sizes and colors. But it does include more than birds. It includes things like dragonflies and bats and insects. And let's not forget about these guys. Now, we put together a really fun video on dinosaurs. I hope you check it out. Okay, for the final day, day six. On day six, God created the land animals. All different kinds of land animals. It's amazing all the different varieties out there. What's interesting is that the Bible says that God created the creatures according to their kinds. You will see that phrase over and over again. Well, what's a kind? Well, scientists are busy working on figuring out what animals belong to each kind. But let me give you a few examples. So we have a lot of different kinds of cat, but one cat kind. And we have all different kinds of dogs, but only one dog kind. And so on and so forth. On day six, God created his favorite people. Now, the other day I was watching TV and they said that, you know, people are just smart animals. Is that true? Well, let's talk about what we have in common. We eat, we sleep, we drink, we walk on the earth, and we do have some similarities in our DNA. But that makes sense because we all live on the same planet. So how are we different? Let's look at what the Bible says. The Bible says that we are special. We're the only ones that were created in the image of God. So what does it mean to be created in the image of God? Let's take a look. First of all, we are not animals. In fact, the Bible tells us that we are in charge of the animals. The other thing is, like God, people are very creative. We make paintings and music and videos. And when was the last time you saw a monkey build a spaceship? It just doesn't happen. You know, people also experience emotions on a much deeper level than animals. But for me, this is the big one. God created us for relationships with each other and with him. All right, we made it. Let's review. On day one, God created earth, space, time, and light. On day two, he created the atmosphere. On day three, God created the dry land and the plants. On day four, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. On day five, God created the flying and sea creatures. And on day six, God created the land animals and people. Now, some people still ask, does the Bible teach that God did all of this in six ordinary days? Check this out. Did God really create the earth and all of creation in just six ordinary days only thousands of years ago? When looking at the actual text, the writer was directed by the Holy Spirit to use certain Hebrew words and phrases to describe creation week, and it sure seems like they went out of their way to define the creation timeline. For example, day or yom in Hebrew is defined in verses 14 to 16 when God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, 
the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. Think about it. For life to begin on earth, this cycle had to be started first. We can see from these verses that days and years are linked, with their duration being determined by the fixed movements of earth in reference to the sun. The earth, sun, and moon are all perfectly synchronized to give us a 24-hour day. This is why the Jewish people count a day from nightfall to nightfall. It all has roots back to the first chapter of Genesis. Notice in the same context where Genesis 1 mentions the days of creation, that days is defined and is even contrasted with years. Surely there's no way to insert millions of years into this text. We can also tell that the word yom in Genesis 1 means an actual day because each usage of the word day is prefaced by evening, morning, and then a number. Yom is used 2,301 times in the Old Testament. When used with a number, yom always means an ordinary day, and this occurs 410 times outside of Genesis 1. Evening and morning are used together without yom 38 times, and it always means an ordinary day. Evening or morning is used together with yom 23 times each, and it always means an ordinary day. Night is used with yom 52 times, always meaning an ordinary day. The writer of Genesis could not have been more clear. In fact, just looking at the first four days of creation, when the earth and the universe were formed, reveals that about one-third of the text is dedicated to defining the chronology of the creation process. Welcome back. I wanted to leave you with one final thought. You know, when you take a look at all the amazing things that God has made and, and how complicated they are and how everything all works together, it's really obvious that these things didn't make themselves. Somebody really smart made them. And that's why the Bible says that when we look at creation, we have no excuse for not believing in God. Well, that's all the time we have together. I'm Big Wave Dave, and I hope to see you again soon. God bless you.